Is candle making easy? Yes. Is there math involved? Also, yes, but don't worry. I'm gonna go over some essential formulas to make it easier for you to calculate how much wax, fragrance, and other materials you might need. First, let's start with the very basics. We are gonna measure all of our materials in weighed ounces or grams, not fluid ounces. This is because things like fragrance, wax, and dyes can all vary in density. And measuring by weight is the most accurate method. You can use ounces or grams, just be sure to keep it consistent. For larger batches, you may also be working in pounds. Remember that there are 16 ounces in one pound. To find out how many ounces are in a certain amount of pounds, multiply the total amount of pounds by 16. It's also good to note that melted wax weighs the same as unmelted wax. While a pouring pitcher will look fuller when filled with wax flakes than it will after the wax has been melted, the weight of the wax will remain the same. And because we'll be weighing out all of our materials, a scale is a necessary tool for candle or soap making. You can find one on the site, or you can use a few different kinds, like kitchen or cosmetic scales, as long as the ounce setting measures to the hundredths place. You'll also want to make sure that your scale has a tear option. This clears the weight to zero. If you place your pouring pitcher on the scale and hit tear, it will reset to zero, and then will only begin weighing the material you put in it. Now that that's out of the way, here are some helpful formulas that will make the candle making process much easier. First up, how do you calculate how much wax your container will hold? Well, if you're using a candle science jar, we list the wax weights right on the product pages. The wax weight will likely differ from the fluid volume of a container, as most jars will hold a bit less wax than they would water. If you don't know how much wax your jar will hold, there are two things you can do to find out. So first, on a teared scale, you could pour melted wax directly into your jar to where your ideal fill line would be. The weight displayed on the scale would be your wax weight. Alternatively, you could place an empty jar on your scale, tear the weight, and pour water into it until it reaches the level you would want your wax to reach. We generally recommend the wax fill level to be no less than half an inch from the top of your container. This is to allow room for the wick, especially if you'll be using a lid with your jar. The weight of the water is approximately the weight you'll need for wax. Because wax and water have different densities though, you will likely have some wax left over. Once you know how much wax your container will hold, you can calculate how much wax you would need for a batch of candles. Here's the formula to use. So for example, if your jar holds eight ounces of wax and you want to make four candles, it should look like this. To fill four jars that hold eight ounces of wax each, you would need two pounds or 32 ounces of wax in total. Now that you know how much wax you'll need, what about fragrance? To figure out how much fragrance you'll need for your candles, you'll need to know two things. First, how much fragrance your wax can hold. Secondly, what fragrance load you'll be using. Most waxes can hold up to a 10% fragrance load, but you'll want to check with the specific wax you'll be using. Typically, we recommend starting your testing with 6% fragrance load. You can usually increase the fragrance to a higher amount if you would like a stronger scent throw. Just be sure to not overload the wax. This could affect how the candle solidifies and how it burns. To calculate the amount of fragrance you'll need for your candles, use this formula. Something to note in this formula is that we will be using decimals to represent the fragrance percentage. Using the example from earlier, if you want to make four candles that hold eight ounces each and use an 8% fragrance load, it would look like this. To calculate different fragrance loads, just change the decimal in the equation according to the percentage you'll be using. A 6% fragrance load would be represented as 0.06 and a 10% fragrance load would be 0.1, for example. Hopefully, these formulas help take some guesswork out of your making process, but if you have any questions or are interested in learning more, you can find more helpful information over at candlescience.com.